hello welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new here please consider to subscribe because i have got a lot more of content that is coming on this channel in the video today honorable brian mundovila was on an interview uh with ambassador mwamba and then they were discussing about the shrinking of democratic space under the upnd government all right so according to them they are saying that um, the space, the democratic space under the UPND regime, or rather under the leadership of His Excellency Haga in the Hijlema, is shrinking. the members of parliament from debating that particular aspect. Mm. But mm. today, the dollar is at 27. Yeah. Today, fuel is at 34. Mm. Today, there's no maize. There's no millimil. These are things that could have been avoided. Yeah. Had we allowed uh, sufficient time on the floor of the house. Mm. If you remember, under uh, Speaker Matibini, mm. if the answer that came from the executive was not satisfactory, he actually asked the minister. Yes. You know, to relook at more, it, information. more information on the answer. Mm, mm. Because those are proper checks and balances. No, He's just saying, being polite, saying you haven't answered, you haven't answered the question. <laughs> but when you have presiding officers answering on behalf of the, then the you, you, you have what is called a unified mm. uh, governance system. You know, you have what is called a centralized uh, you know, you know, governance system. Then um, uh, you can't talk about corruption abuse of office because these are centralized systems mm, mm. a parliament is supposed to uh, uh call out abuse of office and corruption yeah. Yeah. but when they are fused okay when they are unified mm. and when the system is centralized mm. you 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 lose the benefit of that yeah. and that's that is what we have today yeah so i i, I think in some uh, we are saying as parliament we are taking responsibility mm for the high cost of millimil, yeah. the food shortages, mm. the high uh, 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 prices of commodities, mm. fuel. Uh, we are taking full responsibility because um, um, parliament itself stopped members of parliament to address the these issues. These issues. Mm. Uh, the policies in the mining sector so when we are back in parliament now, we are calling upon the Minister of Finance, calling upon the Minister of Mines, mm -hmm. that whatever your good argument may be, yeah. your measures are not working. Mm -hmm. Copper production has gone down. Mm -hmm. It may begin to rise, but it's gone down as we yeah. speak now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we are getting uh, disbursements from the IMF, they've given us milestones. Mm -hmm. It's upon achieving those milestones that they disperse. Yeah. Why did we fail to give the mines, mines similar, milestones? Similar milestones that if you, yes. for example, your production goes, goes up to beyond, one million, yes, we, you we, qualify for for this yeah. incentive. Yeah, because mm. they are talked about three million tons, Emmanuel, and uh, those mining houses are actually just smiling and laughing because mm. uh, it was an undertaking by the mining sector. Mm -hmm. there was no corresponding undertaking by the energy sector. Okay. Because mm -hmm. you know that uh, that sector is driven by energy sector. Mm -hmm. So these mining houses tomorrow will come up and say there is enough power to drive mm -hmm. the sector. Mm -hmm. And yet they benefited. They walked mm -hmm. away with these incentives. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that um, to answer your question, Imano, we are here now. The economy is in shambles. Mm -hmm. We're in a crisis. Mm -hmm. On all fronts. Yes. So our presiding officers, members of parliament, I think it's time now for us to do an introspection. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. is it that we should have done that we didn't do? Yeah. And where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. Are we ready to make amends?
Mm. Are we going to be sincere? Mm. Uh, we had the press briefing yesterday, members of parliament, and yeah. uh, we asked for another chance from the Zambian people mm. to say, please give us up to November this year, assess our performance. Mm. Mm. Because if our resolve debt, our reason to be, mm -hmm. is to provide checks and balances and we are not, provide oversight and we are not, mm. why should we be maintained? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. should Parliament be maintained? Mm. Yeah, because we have to save the purpose. Yes, yes, we are a critical hub in our democracy. Members of Parliament are mm. questioning, why mm. am I earning this allowance? Mm. Mm. Why am I earning this money? Mm. You know, at the expense of, uh, you know, other uh, social services, I'm earning mm. this money for mm. doing nothing. Mm. Because somebody has decided that I can't speak freely. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Are it's, you it's a, holding the executive accountable? even under these circumstances? We are trying, mm. but we think it's not sufficient. Mm. Yeah, you know, uh, you followed Parliament for a number of years. Yeah. I mean, uh, there will come a time when the members weigh in on the minister to a point where, you know, he, he, he even cannot speak. Mm. Mm. At that point, a reasonable minister with his president will go and say, we think there's a problem here. Mm. But when the debate is just heating up mm -hmm. and presiding officer come in and interject, yeah. so the executive it. are getting away with murder. Mm. They're, They're getting, getting away, away with murder. Mm. Yeah, mm. because how did Mutolo get away with the export of maize? Mm. I must ask that question. How did he get away? Mm. When we all knew what the result was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Honorable uh, Msokotwane unilaterally just gave out concessions. Mm. And uh, mm. we are saying these concessions were given to f minds that were friendly to the EPND. Mm. Now, if that's not corruption, Emmanuel, then what is corruption? Yeah. Yeah. You see, corruption is just not a uh, uh, post, post factor. Mm. Uh, you know, it can also be, uh, I can give you now and mm. benefit later. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, mm. not, it's, it's not only after performance. Mm. Mm. It can also be on a promissory note. Yeah. 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 So if you can define the granting of these concessions as corruption, then what is corruption? Another matter before we wind up. The sale of KCM and um, Mopani, the return of uh, Vedanta back to KCM, and the sale of KCM shareholding of 51%, Article 210 of as our Republican Constitution is very clear mm -hmm. that no major asset in this country should be sold, including transfer of shares, yes, yes. should occur without two-thirds parliamentary approval. What are you doing about it? Because let's take the deal, the Mopani deal. Government has bypassed you. They spoke to the investor. We haven't seen submission to parliament or a report to parliament that these shares are being sold in violation of Article 210, Sabbatical 2. That says parliament must approve and give two-thirds majority if in any state-owned enterprise or any major state asset is being sold? Yes, we, we, I think we've, we've sent a warning even to our investors that uh, our laws must be strictly followed. Mm. Uh, for those that are proceeding you know, to conclude uh, deals outside the law, uh, when UPND is out of power, who we'll follow up on all this? Mm. Uh, because the law is very clear. Mm. Uh, transfer of uh, public assets, interest shares, even the dual carriage way. Yeah, it's a transfer of beneficial. Under, it's a public good. Yes. And now it's being transferred migrated, transferred for, for 25, 25 years. years to a private enterprise. So that didn't come to Parliament. Mm. And uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, these are some of the transactions that will be questioned in the next few years. Uh, when the EPND is out. Yeah, so Have you tried to demand, for example, from the Minister of Finance that he brings his deals for... Uh, Honorable, Honorable Ronald Chitotela yeah. uh, did that on several occasions. He was on this particular matter, Article mm. 210. Mm. Yeah, but um, as usual, uh, the, the, the EPND have ignored that. They've proceeded. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so there's a number of transactions that have happened in violation of um, Article 210. And, uh, you know... Is government not aware of these provisions of the law? Remember the president made a statement, uh, Comrade Mwamba, at one point, mm. that, um, 
you know, is irritated by these bureaucracies, <laughs> the rules and bureaucracies. Mm. So w w whenever he can get away with it, he would rather do that than follow these procedures. Mm. He said it himself. Mm. Yeah, so we have seen, you know, there's a, there are violation of uh, uh, laws. Um, when you go to Attorney General's office, uh, Solicitor General's chambers, mm. and look at some of the agreements that are being entered into, in violation of our own rules, mm. against the advice of technocrats. There are so many. Mm. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of work once UPND is out of power mm. uh, to look at what is going on at um, uh, Solicitor General's office, Attorney General's office, mm. the number of agreements that um, uh, should ordinarily not have been entered into, yeah. that are entering into. So there's going to be a complete review of these, mm. uh, these agreements. Uh, when you look at uh, some of them, uh, it's as if um, uh, our colleagues in government today would like to auction our country. Uh, you have, um, I, was, I was listening to Andy Ford Banda the other time, yeah. uh, asking very intelligent questions about a company that is buying more money. Mm, mm, These are mm. companies that were recently registered. Mm. It's, it has no website, it's connected, it's, it's nowhere. Yeah. You know. um, so, yeah, but you ask questions to say, mm. who did the due diligence on these companies? Because mm. this company didn't exist yesterday yeah. when the negotiations started. Yeah, so we, there are a number of um, questionable uh, transactions that have happened under the, the, the UPND. Mm -hmm. And uh, all we can uh, do is call upon the Zambians just to be alert, uh, be able to keep information. Mm -hmm. And uh, for our dear civil servants, uh, don't be forced to do uh, the wrong things. Mm -hmm. When you think your superior is acting outside the law, ask them to put it in writing. Yeah. Uh, give your advice in writing and then advise that uh, anything different from that should be put in writing. Mm. That would be your, your defense. the record for your... Uh, for your own defense. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm. they may put you, they may, may put you in, in problems. Yeah. Yeah, so... What, what are your last words well, on these matters and the concerns of the role of parliament? And you are literally under siege where you are paralyzed as parliament... You, members of the opposition, are unable literally to do your work and your job. Yes, I think the, my last words, um, Ambassador Mwamba, is that um, to my colleagues, members of parliament, on both sides of the house, you need to summon your courage. Mm -hmm. Your representatives of the people, in the next one year plus, we'll be going back to, the, to our people mm -hmm. for re-election. Mm -hmm. And these people are uh, are people that um, are awake now. Mazambians yeah. uh, okay? uh, They'll ask us difficult questions. Mm. Okay? Uh, you know, why should we vote for you? Again. Because there's a competitor out there uh, who will be able to say, uh, these MPs were unable to represent you. Mm. We need to stand up. Uh, that parliament is for the Zambian people. Mm. It doesn't matter which political party one belongs to. Mm. We are there as representatives of um, our people. Mm. Yeah, because if I'm going on behalf of other MPs uh, to, to, to tend an apology mm. uh, for our inaction uh, or mm. omissions, mm. it's because even somebody in Mongo, mm. in, in Mazabuka, is feeling mm. uh, the, the, the pinch of this yeah. harsh economy. And I'm saying we would have done better. Yes, maybe prices would have gone up, but they would not have gone up um, like they have done now mm. had we been given a chance to do our work. Yeah. For the MPs that are new, uh, we are saying, look, this is uh, three years down the line. Uh, I think you've seen for yourselves that um, sometimes what we are told on the floor of the house, that the MP is always right may not be accurate, mm. especially uh, after seeing what has happened in the agricultural sector, uh, seeing what has happened in the energy sector, in the mining sector, and actually, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, in the, in the financial sector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to stand up. Mm -hmm. We need to wake up mm -hmm. for Zambia. Uh, mm -hmm. Presiding officers, it's not a fight between yeah. uh, presiding officers and members of the opposition. I mean, it, it, it's a fact that all three presiding officers are from the UPND. Mm. Yeah, but uh, what actually happens, there's nothing wrong with uh, a speaker having belonged to a political party. But the moment they occupy the seat... Oh, they are required to be fair, are, to be objective, yes. impartial. Yes. They should allow 
parliament to function as it is designed. They can't push a partisan agenda yes. like we've seen in the last three years. And not only should they be impartial and independent, but be seen mm. to be impartial and independent. That's what mm. is important. Mm. Yeah, so maybe um, even as they review the work that they've done in the past three years, the question to ask is that in the eyes of an ordinary Zambian uh, traveling on a minibus to Kabwe, mm. how have we fared? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that answer is what the, really, the, the real answer is. Mm. But most importantly, I think we're all here to serve. Yeah. And what I would ask for is one, respect for members of parliament. I don't think members have been treated with respect mm. the past three years. Mm. We've all done benchmarking tours. Mm. We know how members of parliament are respected in other jurisdictions, yeah. including this jurisdiction. Mm. Members of parliament have been respected before. Yeah. We want to call upon presiding officers to firstly respect members of parliament mm. because they're representatives of the people. Mm. It doesn't matter how they appear to us uh, you know, by way of stature. Yeah. But they are carrying 60,000, 70,000 voices behind them. Mm. They must be respected. Mm. The contributions uh, from members of parliament on the floor of the house should equally be respected mm. because they don't speak for themselves. They mm. speak for and on behalf of the Zambian people yes. and the people yes. that uh, they represent. Mm. And then, uh, you know, uh, lastly, uh, the executive should be left to defend themselves against the opposition. They don't need to be helped. Yeah. We want to call upon this, the presiding officers to remain blind mm. and deaf. Mm. Mm. We want to, the parliamentary system to work. Mm. Parliamentary systems work through whips. Yeah. The other side, they've got a government chief whip. They've got a deputy whip. Okay, These mm. are ministerial positions, mm. so to speak. Mm. On the opposition, there's leader of opposition. Yeah. Yeah. There is a chief whip mm -hmm. and deputy whip. Mm -hmm. These five uh, positions, these five individuals should run parliament. Mm -hmm. They run parliament on the floor. Yeah. All the presiding officers should do is call upon uh, uh, the whips to maintain mm -hmm. order in the house. Mm -hmm. The same way we are called for consultations behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, the calling of names of MPs on the floor of the house should come to an end. Mm. That is mm. disrespectful. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it's not supposed to be like that. Mm. A member should only be called in extreme circumstances. Yeah. But ordinarily, uh, I'm sure in the past three years, you don't even know that the whips exist in that house. Yeah. There's been no work for whips. Mm. When was the last time you had presiding officers calling upon the government chief whip mm. to take charge of the house, the yeah. discipline of the house? You mm. haven't. Mm. You may not even know the name of who was the deputy whip. Mm. In our time, you knew that Bran Mundwili was a, a government chief whip and, and Tutu Angulube was mm. known mm. because we were called upon from time to time. Mm. You also knew that Jack Mwimbu was leader of opposition, mm. Honorable Msokotwane and Honorable Garin Kombo at some point were whips yeah. because the whips were meant to work. We were running across the floor of the house yes. to make yes. sure, first of all, that there's a quorum mm -hmm. because now even the quorum is a problem. That's why maybe they want proxy voting. <laughs> uh, it, it, no, no, but you see, um, as a whip, you actually seen running up and down the corridors, mm. especially after after breaks, tea break, and to organize members to. Get, so get, the forum, the quorum is formed in the yes. house. But because the functions of the whips, uh, uh, the function of the whips have been ignored completely. Mm. The whips don't even uh, feel obliged to to. To, to, to carry out that particular function. Mm. Members just walk in whenever they want and so on and so forth. Mm. Yeah, so I think what we are calling for is just the operationalization of parliament, parliamentary functions. As provided for. As them. provided for. We're not asking for anything beyond what mm. the law provides. Mm. Uh, and we are saying uh, any compromise uh, may result in dire consequences. Mm. You know, they, 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 there's actually there are significant implications in our democratic uh, dis dispensation. Uh, when we, uh, we, we ignore what is provided for. Mm. So that's all that we're asking for. Yeah. 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 No, thank you very much. Honorable Bran Mundubili, thank you for finding time you know, mm. outside your busy schedule to come and share with us the concerns we have with Parliament. I received a lot of queries that we should dedicate at least just one hour to discussing the role of Parliament and the current concerns, especially in highlighting the shrinking democratic space.